Welcome to this new series on neuroanatomy. Let us begin with overview. Human beings are complex organisms and human nervous system is the most complex and therefore interesting. It makes you perform some of the most mundane tasks like tying your shoelace. It also makes you take decisions and actions that may alter the history of mankind. What makes it interesting? is the way it allows us to interact in our day-to-day -day life with our complex environment while constantly enabling us to learn, improvise and evolve. Our understanding of brain is far from complete. As a human brain, while unparalleled in evolution, does not yield easily for experimentation, both due to technical and ethical reasons. Most of what we know today about the functioning of brain is the result of observations of what happens when things go wrong and we still have a long way to go. While nervous system as a whole works as a single unit, for our understanding, we divide this into three parts for the discussion purpose. A central nervous system which is located within the cranium and vertebral canal made up of brain and spinal cord a peripheral nervous system which permeates throughout the body and is made up of nerves and ganglia and the enteric nervous system which is situated in the wall of the gastrointestinal tract most often considered as a part of the peripheral nervous system itself which is again made up of neurons and plexuses. Nervous system can also be classified as somatic nervous system it is that part which controls the voluntary actions and autonomic nervous system which is that part which controls the activities which are not under voluntary control. Both somatic and autonomic nervous systems have parts of their components in central nervous system and part of it in the peripheral nervous system. Autonomic nervous system is in turn is made up of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Peripheral nervous system includes both afferent and efferent nerves both spinal as well as cranial nerves and it is also made up of sensory and autonomic ganglia. Ganglia by definition are collection of neuronal cell bodies outside the central nervous system. Peripheral nervous system forms the conduit that connects the central nervous system with effector organs. It conducts information from the entire body to the central nervous system and also carries the information from the central nervous system to the entire body. Hence the injury to peripheral nervous system results in equally grievous loss of function. Like in this case, despite the central nervous system is functioning normally, the effector organs still do not receive any information. A situation somewhat similar to having sufficient water in the reservoir but the end user still doesn't get any water because of breakage in the pipeline. Central nervous system on the contrary is made up of large collection of almost all the neuronal cell bodies and their immediate processes. It has mainly got two parts, a grey matter which is a large collection of central cell bodies. Smaller collections of cell bodies are called as nuclei and the nuclei which are having similar functions if they are arranged in a column, columnar fashion they are called as functional columns. Grey matter, nuclei and functional columns are basically made up of cell bodies, their processes or neurites, synapses and supporting glial cells. White matter on the contrary is made up of axons of the neurons carrying information. Certain places these axons are collected into a distinct columns which are called as tracts. These are collection of axons sharing common source, common destination and common pathway. Let us see how this nerve system is organized. The information reaches through multiple sensory receptors, each sensory receptor carrying a particular type of sensation. Like exteroception, that is general sensation from the trunk and body, carrying touch, pain, 
pressure temperature proprioception that is sensation of position and movement carried from the muscles and the joints and visceral sensation all this from the trunk and the limbs region are carried to the spinal cord through the spinal afferent nerves the same sensations from the head and neck region as well as special sensation of olfaction vision taste vestibular and hearing sensations are carried to the brain through cranial afferent fibers once this information reaches brain or the spinal cord the message may be immediately relayed to the effector organs through reflex activity by means of spinal or cranial efferent nerves or the information can be sent to higher centers in brain or all the way to the cerebrum through ascending tracks and then the cerebrum or the higher centers in the brain will send the information back to the cranial nerve nuclei or the spinal cord through descending tracks now this will modulate the response and this modulated response will then be carried to the effector organs through either the cranial or spinal efferent nerve fibers as i said both spinal cord and brain help in integrating the impulses coming from multiple sources and respond effectively in addition the brain or especially the cerebral cortex controls higher functions like sensory perception skilled motor activities language memory and learning planning and insight emotions and behavior while the working of the brain in performing these higher functions is still largely a mystery we now understand reasonably well about how brain regulates sensory and motor activities yet give it a moment of thought while holding a rose how we register and react first to the pain of the thorn than to the softness of petals although both these are extraceptive sensations if you are in a busy airport or a train terminal how your attention is quickly focused on that one familiar face although you are surrounded by a sea of faces in a room of 15 to 20 people all talking loudly in their groups how someone calling your name gets your attention immediately amidst all the cacophony surrounding you right now at this instance you may be sitting in your room by the study table trying to focus on this video with nothing nearby to eat but the moment i say apple you can not only visualize the apple and the color of its skin but get a waft of its smell and remember the taste of its sweetness of course knowing my students the minute i mentioned apple some of you may suddenly focus on your laptop or tablet or the cell phone because it might remind you of a very different apple this reliving reliving of an experience by recall of memory that was assembled in the first place through multiple sensory inputs of vision taste and smell is also a function of brain as i said in the beginning learning neuroanatomy is an interesting journey let us hope you enjoy Thank you.